Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Sketch Adventure. In today's episode, we're going to watch me completely screw up a painted sketch and then try to save it. So originally I was going to make this video about color temperature, but then I ran into problems with my sketch almost immediately, and it didn't take long till I could see this would be a failure of a sketch. It's so weird how these little paintings that I spend 10 to 20 minutes on can be easily labeled as failures, which I realize gives me an excuse just to give up on it. So I was thinking, okay, I'm gonna have to scrap this one and start over, but then it occurred to me, I spent so little time on this already, why not try to fix it? I mean, as long as the paper itself isn't physically damaged, then there's always an opportunity to fix it. I'm getting a little ahead of myself though. Right now things are going relatively smoothly. As usual, I'm blocking in the general information with thinned down burnt umber. And remember, since we're using gouache, the paint is thinned down by using very small amounts of water. I'm always quite loose in general when estimating the placement for the main features, because I know anything I put down now is subject to change, and really this information is just a guide to make my next mark slightly more accurate. I like to build upon my previous information until I get something that I think works. This isn't to say I only build up small subtle changes, even if I put down a very bold mark, then that mark is now a visual statement on the paper that can't be ignored. That mark is going to inform my subsequent decisions whether I like it or not. Little did I know it, these first watery marks spell the beginning of the end. One of the big problems I ran into on this initial attempt was that I had way too much water pooling on my palette that was causing my marks on the paper to become puddles of color. The only time I ever really want this is if I'm doing a burnt umber sketch at the beginning and I want to add some value for context. It's easy to blend and soften wet marks, but this certainly wasn't my intention on this one. I was wanting solid clear notes of color, and as you'll see, they begin misbehaving. In addition to the watery marks, I'm failing to establish a context with the color. My temperature variations are far too great right now, and overall leaning towards yellow too much. Remember a moment ago when I said our marks inform our subsequent decisions? Well at this point I'm pretty much in a state of panic. I think everyone, myself included, wants their painting to evolve smoothly without problems. Well unfortunately this is rarely the case. It's like life itself. I can't imagine anyone who's listening to this has had a life without a few bumps in the road. But what allows us to grow is learning how to overcome or solve those bumps. So I'm particularly bad with getting discouraged when my paintings start to look awful. I'm very tempted to wipe down the whole thing and just start a new one. Now while I don't think this is terrible advice, unless you've ruined the paper though, I think it would probably be more beneficial just to start correcting it. Sometimes that might involve wiping down the painting, but then going back over it and building it up again. At this point I realized it would be better just to smudge the current painting down and remove as much water as I can from the surface. Just this simple act gives me hope again because I can start to see another way that I can approach building the painting up. Despite talking about it fairly often, I fell into the trap of trying to be specific before getting the general blocky forms established. That combined with the swimming pool surface really sealed the fate of that first attempt. Now I'm going back in, with less water this time, and trying to carve out the simple shapes that describe the front plane of the face. I want to make these shapes relatively flat with minimal variation. Of course there will still be some amount, especially from what's underneath, but at the very least I'm thinking about it one color at a time and as as few shapes as possible. Aside from the mouth area still being unclear, overall the face is much simpler and clearer than the previous attempt, and in some ways I enjoy aspect of it at this stage more than the final. 
I find it really interesting how easy it is to want to cling onto a painting and not paint over what we've already done, even if it's for the better. I think it's a fear of losing what we've created, even if it's flawed. It's very much a conscious effort for me to overcome this, and even when I do make the changes, they aren't always for the better, but the most important thing is to keep trying until you've either destroyed the painting or achieved your results. I can only speak for myself, but I suspect many artists constantly grapple with the problem of being attached to their work. The more attached we are, the less objective we're able to be when it comes to deciding what needs to be changed. That's going to make it much harder to make seemingly destructive changes, even if they're ultimately going to strengthen the piece. Here I'm adding in the necessary light tones above the upper lip in order to define it. Right now it looks abnormal because there shouldn't be such a dark mark on a plane that's facing the light. Another important thing for me to address is the lack of shadow underneath the bottom lip. They too need to be separate from the chin area as there's a curved wall that the bottom lip juts out from. Just putting that mark like I did there isn't really an adequate solution. It should have been a larger, blockier description of that entire wall. But that's one of the reasons why I enjoy making these videos so much. I get to rewatch myself paint something and be as critical as I want. I find painting realistically over many hours not to be nearly as difficult as this, because it's comprised of so many sessions and opportunities to build up to a very credible result, which I do enjoy. That being said, I've always wanted to be able to do small, quick gouache paintings that are still very credible. And so much of the answer to that lies in being able to simplify and consolidate the light and structure information. I find both ways of painting complementary to one another and so exciting to pursue. At this point I was looking to soften the edge of the hairline, as well as to maybe break up that shape a little, but I ended up mixing a color that was too saturated. Since there wasn't much I could do about that, I just decided to run with it and began placing it in different areas. I thought it might be a neat rhythmic idea if I placed it around the portrait as well, but I quickly noticed that it felt too sparse and ununified, so I blended it back towards the hair. More and more I'm interested in approaching painting, whether that be in gouache or oils, in less of a tightly controlled manner and more of a loose way. Now this doesn't mean I want to be any less accurate, but rather I want my brush strokes to create interesting marks that have an interesting quality on an abstract level. I find that I learn a lot about letting go while doing these little sketches. There's so many things that I would fix if this were an oil painting, but because of the small size of this sketch combined with the directness of gouache, there's not much I can do about it other than to accept that this is what I'm able to do, for better or worse, at this time. Once the video's been posted, I can only strive to do better next time, but so long as you and I have both learned something from this experience, then I think that's the most important thing. I ended up struggling quite a bit here. I wanted to lighten the sclera, or the white of the eye, just a little bit, but I overshot it way too much. So sit back and watch me attempt to knock down the values in these now cartoony eyes until I finally manage to get it to a decent value again. This kind of thing goes back to what I was saying earlier. You can't be too afraid about making a change even if you end up making it worse. Because remember that so long as you're dedicated to solving the problem, you will ultimately create something better, even if the initial attempt puts you back a step.
I've been really excited about oil painting lately, so I think I'm going to do a series where I'm painting at the easel rather than the sketchbook. I'd also like to set up another camera to record my palette. This way you can all see how I mix my colors. Something that had been bugging me for a while was on our right side, her cheek looked to be a little swollen. So now I have to mix up her hair color and cut back into the contour edge of the face. You pretty much get one shot, so it's important to be careful. I can't tell you how many times I've accidentally cut too far in and deformed the entire face. Those experiences were important to have though, because without them I probably wouldn't be as careful as I am now when it comes to that specific part of the painting. As we come to the end of this video, I just want to thank you all for sticking around and I hope you've learned something. I'll see you all on the next sketch adventure.